Hello and good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday I came online and started to tie a fly. Actually, I tied the whole thing. And um, it came off pretty rough. And so I decided, I left it on Facebook, but I didn't put it on YouTube. So I thought that I would try to <clears throat> tie it again today. It's been a while since I tied it, so that it kind of it needs practice, and I didn't have any practice. Anyway, um, so I wanted to go on and tie it again. This is going to be an Adams uh, dry fly. Dry fly means that when you cast it um, to the fish, it lands on top of the water and stays on top of the water. It doesn't sink until the fish uh, come up and eat it. So um, I'll get started with the Adams dry fly. <clears throat> Show you my um, the parts that I'm using and process. So this is my little tying setup here. Let me get zoomed in if it'll let me. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I'll be using these hackles. I have a brown and a grizzly hackle. Kind of looks orangish, but yeah, brown and grizzly. Um, and these hackles are when you flare them out, they, this one has stripes, that's the grizzly hackle, and you can see that all the barbs all the way up are the same length. And then, um, <clears throat> this is the brown hackle. Again, the barbs are basically the same length. And then this fly um, is actually going to have uh, wings, so uh, you'll see those go on. And I'll be using We're using a yellow uh, tying thread and let's see that should be it so I've got my hook already in the vise it's a very small hook as you can tell by comparing it to my thumbnail size it's pretty short um, these flies it's easier obviously to tie them on a bigger hook but I'm gonna give it a whirl anyway um, I've tied them before I actually have one here it's an older one that I tied. That's what I'm going to be copying. So, um, so I tried to copy yesterday or day before yesterday, and it didn't turn out very well. So, I'll give it another shot here. So, as always, um, you start with a layer of thread on the hook, and as you're doing this, as you're wrapping it, I hold the thread up so that when it comes down, it keeps the wraps together see it hits and works down so that it bunches it up and also it makes it so that the bump that it leaves is all along the top of the hook so it doesn't make it all lumpy like me <laughs> and that's it I'm gonna take this little piece and snip it off now oh I forgot so I've also got this white feather I'm going to use this for the tail piece. So I'm going to, I've, what I do is I drag it backwards like this to flare it out. And then I just take a bunch and pull off a bunch. And I grab the butt ends of those. Like that. And I get it about the length of the shank of the hook. And I hold it so that it goes there. And then, in order to get the feathers tied down, I go between my thumb and my finger with the thread and hold it until I get to the other side. And then I just drop it down on them. Do that again. And once I do that, I should be good. Uh, let me pull these out a little bit. Got them a little bit too long, I think. Just pull them into the thread there. So now I should be able to just wrap and cover. And you saw that my thread hit the hook point there. Um, that can be dangerous when you're tying because it can weaken your thread. In fact, you might have seen when I did that that there was a little piece of thread that peeled off. But I recovered. So I'm tying it down. I'm going to get back down to the butt end here, and then I'm going to go, I'm going to pull these up and go under. Well, let me see. 
and what this will do and then see it helps it stand up a little bit and then you can kind of flare it out and all that does is just help it um, when it hits the water to stay afloat so the way that these flies work they're light enough that you actually um, it works just like a spider the way a spider can walk on water or uh, or whatever it uses the surface tension um, so I guess the, the pressure holding the fly up is better than the weight of the fly itself um, so I'm just covering this tail end with the yellow and then I'm going to leave a little bit of room here to tie in my feathers um, let's see I need to go and tie in my I need to tie in my wings first so the wings of this um, is the same as the grizzly hackle that I have it's just a very very small one so on the um, this is a this is two separate pieces um, these are off of a chicken so the this would be like around the head where they cut it off and so right up there at the at the top of the head you see these feathers are very short and then they get longer as they go down so depending on the size of the fly you're tying uh, you can choose different different size feathers to get a different um, profile on the fly <clears throat> so to tie in the wings I'm just gonna leave these the way they are I'm not gonna flare them out and I'm gonna tie them on both sides so um, I'm going to strip it back. I don't want it to be too long because the barbs on the feathers that I'm using only stick up a certain height. And I want these to stick up the same height as those barbs or maybe just a touch higher. So I'll just go about there. Very small. If I wanted to write a short little letter, I could just clip that off and use it like a quill. <laughs> Not really. That would be terrible. Um, so let me clean this one off also and get it prepared. Again, you just hold the feather so the points are coming up. And you drag your f finger and thumb backwards. And just get those barbs off the bottom of it. Like that. Now when I was pulling that off, it actually snapped off, but I still have enough room to tie it on. And typically you would tie this feather on after you do the tail, but before you do the body. Um, so anyway, I just went out of order a little bit. And this is a little bit tricky here because now I'm having to hold it with my right hand because of the location and then come down eh, see I just did that and I dropped it okay well I'll prepare another one that happens sometimes and there's no way I'm going to find that feather in the carpet so I'm just going to go ahead and prepare another one okay And all I'm doing is making sure that these feathers are on either side of the hook. So if you're not familiar with fly fishing, the idea is that um, compared to bait fishing, with bait fishing you have a heavy line, uh, a light line, and then you tie on a heavy weight. You tie on some kind of um, attractant, whether it be stink bait or shrimp or a uh, worm or 
you use um, some kind of a jig and then you throw the weight out and the weight carries the line and then you reel in the line to get back your weight with fly fishing the idea is that the line is actually the weighted part it's not heavy but it's heavy enough that it's heavier than the hook and so when you cast you're casting the line and you can actually cast the line without there being a hook on the line and you can cast it just the same as if as if there was a hook there um, so that's the difference between bait casting and fly casting so that because of that it makes it so that you can cast a hook that's this size without having any additional weight involved and be able to cast out you know still 40 50 yards or feet whatever um, in fact I think that um, there's a, a lady that was really popular the last name is Wolf Joan Joanne Joan um, and she actually won a men's fly casting competition before women were allowed or before they realized that they didn't want women in the competition she went out there and she won the competition casting I think 100 feet something like that um, so you can cast these things a long way if you know how to do it you can cast in the wind you can cast um, from a boat or standing in the water and you can pretty much hit any spot that you want to cast to if you practice in fact you practice casting to um, you practice casting to hula hoops floating in the water very often or laying in the grass you can practice casting in the grass all right so i'm going to tie in my brown hackle or i think you might even call it ginger We'll be careful not to knock down that that wing. So I'll tie that one in. I'm gonna break off some of these guys. Pull this back and tie it closer. And you can actually save these quills and use them for other things. For instance, when you glue up the head, if you ever get glue in the eye of the hook, you can actually put that in there. And drag it through and it'll clean the glue out so it won't mess up your line so okay I've got this cut off I'm actually gonna take some of these barbs off because this is one of the problems that I had yesterday or the day before when I tied this fly um, I need that the I need the barbs to only be on one side so that when I wrap it it doesn't become an issue of the barbs going everywhere and getting like sticking out This must have been a healthier chicken. These barbs don't want to come off with this one. Okay, that's good enough. So let me tie my other. Just tie them right next to each other and you tie them at an angle. And then what ends up happening is you end up um, you end up wrapping the feathers over these quill stump things. Fold that back so I can get to it and I'm going to cut this off. I'm sorry if I bump the camera and send it shaking. I don't want to make y'all seasick. But uh, the way I've got my setup here, my camera is right in front of me, between me and the fly. So very often I hit it my bobbin so I'm going to bring it to right here and tie it off so now the next step I have hackle pliers let me squeeze them they have little pinchers there and I'm going to take one at a time if I can get it You're experiencing technical difficulties, please stand by. 
All right. So, so these wings are just for the look. You don't, they don't really help the fly much. In fact, sometimes they cause an issue whenever you cast, it kind of makes the fly spin and it makes you get um, a twist in your line. All right, so I'm just gonna take this now. So I've got my tail, obviously at the end, right where the hook bends down. And then I've got this body section going from there to about halfway up the hook. And that's where I'm starting my feather to wrap. And so you just have to kind of segment these things so that they don't get too bulky. And then you just start wrapping this and wrap forward. Try not to bind down those wings. So I'll go just before the wing. Hold those back so I can go tight in behind or in front of the wing there. Try to get one more turn on that one. Okay. And just wrap around. And you gotta wiggle back and forth when you do that so that you don't catch the barbs very much. You want to try to avoid catching the barbs. And then when you clip to avoid um, cutting off your string, you just hold the string back out of the way. Snip it off. I'm going to leave the line there because I'm going to do the same thing with the next hackle. So I'm going to pinch that there. And I'm just going to wind this right on top of the other one. And if you go back and forth, it'll actually work its way in to the other feather in between the barbs. Yeah, that's looking better than yesterday's. Okay, you just keep going back and forth. And you see it. So now I'm behind, now I'm in front of the wing feathers. You just go back and forth. And there we go. I could probably get a couple of more turns out of that, but I think that's probably good. So I get two turns to hold that down. Go ahead and carefully snip that off so it doesn't uh, it doesn't get in the way. And then you just pull these back to finish the head. And all that is is just wrapping right here behind the eye. And bulk it up so it's about the size of a bug's head. Pretty easy. And then I'm going to do a half hitch, which is one wrap around my finger. I cross above the top of the hook. And I come down over the hook. And then I drop this down. I'm going to put my thumb here to keep it from flipping over far enough to catch the barbs. So now I've got a half hitch right there, right behind the eye of the hook. I'll do another one. Just for grins. Okay. And then my last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it off. Tighten my line back up. I'm going to take a couple of turns here to get my thread back to the back of the head. Right there. So those two half hitches will secure it, but I want to make sure and finish it. So the way I do that is I, um, I go over my finger. I go under the hook here. I'm doing that at the back of the head and I go back over my finger again. I'm going to hold that with my other finger, my second finger here, and I'm going to just snip this. So now I've got the loop and I've got another one just hanging loose. That's my tag end. I'm going to use my finger and go through the loop, take the tag end, pull it through, put that back where it was. So my tag end is still here on this side. I'm going to go in again, grab the tag end, pull it through, and then I'm going to use a pointed object, or I can just use my finger or however I want, but a pointed object is easiest because you can guide it right where you want. Take it off my finger, and then I'm just going to drag this down, and then I can take the scissors out and leave the knot right where I want it, right there. And as you can see, I did not, I didn't tie down any of the loose barbs. 
Then I'm going to just take my string and my thread and snip it off here. And I'm going to use fingernail polish, clear fingernail polish. Uh, some people are picky and use something like hard as nails or whatever they want. This is just, uh, I think, a dollar at Target. Maybe two. So I'm just going to drag across the top. Drag across the bottom. And sometimes you don't even have to have a brush. You can just have like a needle stuck in there. Because you just need a drop. And so now that fly will... The glue will set. And you can even, once you get it there, just knock off the extra. And like I said before, um, I can use my quill. Because I think I might have gotten some in the eye. So I just put that through. And that cleans out the eye of the hook. And then once I'm done with that, I can fluff it up. Like that. And I'll show you. I'll back it up. And show you my finished fly. The wings can be separated a little bit. But there we go. So because I took the um, because I took the barbs off the second side of the of the hackle, when I wrapped it, it came out a little thin. Um, this other fly that I have, I didn't do that, and you can see the difference in how thick that one is. This is the old one with the barbs on both sides of the hook, and this is the new one with the barbs on one side. I'm not usually very picky about whether the fly can float or not. Um, if, sometimes it matters, but most of the time, if it doesn't float, I just drag it underneath and use it like a jig. Um, but the idea is that when it lands on the water, it just sits like that. It just really sits. Um, the hook's not even in the water, in this case, if it rides the way it is on my hand, which it usually does. So it just sits there, and, and there's stuff you can put on the feathers to help them stay drier, but they're already bird feathers, so they don't take on water. So it'll just sit like that on top, and it'll float, and then the fish will come up from, from underneath, and you'll see them just take it. And so if you're ever by the water and you see little rings popping up out of nowhere, um, sometimes if you watch, you'll see the fish actually come up with their mouth and grab whatever it is. Or if you see a bug on top of the water, you can actually see them come up and take that bug for food. Um, and so all we're doing with fly tying is imitating whatever kind of bug is on the water. And this fly right here um, is kind of listed as one of the most popular flies because it can imitate so many of those bugs. So um, um, pretty fun to tie, pretty simple, but um, it's pretty... Um, It's pretty good to be able to tie something like this and just, you know, I, I love just looking at this stuff. It's beautiful. Um, and just to think, uh, you know, I'm creating something and just trying to even come close to mimicking something that God created um, that the fish love. So uh, that's pretty cool to even come close to what God's creation is as far as that goes. So anyway, there's the Adam's dry fly, um, my version and a definitely more successful version than yesterday. So hope you enjoyed watching. And um, if you like watching this video, <clears throat> I have several different uh, types of flies that I've tied and I've got them on YouTube. If you search for quiet man, 28 quiet man is one word and then number 28 at the end. So quiet man, 28. And I've got about <clears throat> 25 videos there um, that I've done over the last month and a half or so. And uh, you can go and check out some different flies. So anyway, uh, there's my fly. And I hope you liked watching it. And, you know, go check me out um, on, on YouTube. And um, maybe you'll learn. And uh, maybe not. Maybe just sit back and enjoy it. Um, and uh, one of the things that I... <clears throat> one of the reasons I do this is I don't consider myself... I mean, I, I wouldn't be a, like a production fly tire. Um, I tie flies for myself for fishing and, you know, maybe occasionally I'll give somebody a fly, but, <clears throat> um, I, I just find it really enjoyable to be able to create those things and, um, 
have fish eat them. <laughs> and so just even if my flies aren't the best, just knowing the steps of how to do it, um, I think is interesting and fun. And some people just don't even know like what it is that this is. So um, it's tying flies, tying things that look like ants or like mosquitoes or crickets or minnows. You can do mice, you can do worms, um, all tied onto a small hook and um, thrown out to the water to try to catch fish. So that's what I use it for and hope you enjoyed it and try it out. It's fun. And I actually tried it, tried tying before I ever tried fly fishing. So there you go. Anyway, enjoy and I'll catch you later. Thank you.